I'm Elizabeth Warren, and this is my first Democratic convention. I, okay, enough, enough. I never thought I'd run for the Senate. And I sure never dreamed that I'd be the warm-up act for President Bill Clinton. He's an amazing man who had the good sense to marry one of the coolest women on this planet. I, w I want to give a special shout-out to the Massachusetts delegation. I'm counting on you to help me win and to help President Obama win. I'm here tonight to talk about hardworking people, people who get up early, stay up late, cook dinner and help out with homework, people who can be counted on to help their kids, their parents, their neighbors, and a lady down the street whose car broke down, people who work their hearts out but are up against a hard truth. The game is rigged against them. It wasn't always this way. Like a lot of you, I grew up in a family on the ragged edges of the middle class. My daddy sold carpeting and ended up as a maintenance man. After he had a heart attack, my mom worked the phones at Sears so we could hang on to our house. All three of my brothers served in the military. One was career, the second a good union job in construction, and the third started a small business. Me? I was waiting tables at 13 and married at 19. I graduated from public schools and taught elementary school. I have a wonderful husband, two great children, and three beautiful grandchildren. And I'm grateful down to my toes for every opportunity that America gave me. This is a great country. I grew up in an America that invested in its kids and built a strong middle class that allowed millions of children to rise from poverty and establish secure lives. An America that created Social Security and Medicare so that seniors could live with dignity. An America in which each generation built something solid so that the next generation could build something better. But now, for many years, our middle class has been chipped, squeezed, and hammered. Talk to the construction worker I met from Malden, Massachusetts, who went nine months without finding work. Talk to the head of a manufacturing company in Franklin, trying to protect jobs but worried about rising costs. Talk to the student in Worcester who worked hard to finish his degree, and now he's drowning in debt. Their fight is my fight, and it's Barack Obama's fight, too. That's right. Yes. People feel like the system is rigged against them. And here's the painful part. They're right. The system is rigged. Look around. Oil companies guzzle down billions in profits. Billionaires pay lower tax rates than their secretaries. And Wall Street CEOs the same ones who wrecked our economy and destroyed millions of jobs still strut around Congress, no shame, demanding favors, and acting like we should thank them. Does anyone here have a problem with that? Yeah, well, I do too. I do too. I talk to small business owners all across Massachusetts. And not one of them, not one, made big bucks from the risky bets that brought down our economy. I talked to nurses and programmers, 
salespeople and firefighters, people who bust their tails every day, and not one of them, not one, stashes their money in the Cayman Islands to avoid paying their fair share of taxes. These folks don't resent that someone else made more money. We're Americans. We celebrate success. We just don't want the game to be rigged. We've fought to level the playing field before. About a century ago, when corrosive greed threatened our economy and our way of life, the American people came together under the leadership of Teddy Roosevelt and other progressives to bring our nation back from the brink. We started to take children out of factories and put them in schools. We began to give meaning to the words consumer protection by making food and medicine safe. And we gave the little guys a better chance to compete by preventing the big guys from rigging the markets. We turned adversity into progress because that's what we do. <laughs> Americans are fighters. We're tough, resourceful, and creative. And if we have the chance to fight on a level playing field where everyone pays a fair share and everyone has a real shot, then no one, no one can stop us. <laughs> President Obama gets it because he's spent his life fighting for the middle class. And now he's fighting to level that playing field because we know the economy doesn't grow from the top down, but from the middle class out and the bottom up. That's how we create jobs and reduce the debt. And Mitt Romney, he wants to give tax cuts to millionaires and billionaires, but for middle class families who are hanging on by their fingernails, his plan will hammer them with a new tax hike of up to $2,000. Mitt Romney wants to give billions in breaks to big corporations, but he and Paul Ryan would pulverize financial reform, voucherize Medicare, and vaporize Obamacare. The Republican vision is clear. I got mine, the rest of you are on your own. <laughs> Republicans say they don't believe in government. Sure they do. They believe in government to help themselves and their powerful friends. <laughs> After all, Mitt Romney's the guy who said, Corporations are people. No, Governor Romney, corporations are not people.